Hi everybody. In this lecture I want to talk to you about quantum confinement. Now this lecture follows up a couple of other lectures that you should watch first if you haven't already on the Fermi energy and on the density of states. Okay? So let's remember our expression for the Fermi energy from a previous lecture. The Fermi energy, which I symbolized here with epsilon sub f here, okay, so the Fermi energy is a property of a material. So um, it's equal to h squared over 8m times 3n over pi v to the 2 thirds. Now here h is Planck's constant, m is the mass of the um, particle, in this case it's the electron, right, because we're talking about the conduction electrons in the solid. And n over v is the number of particles per unit volume here. v is the volume and n is the number of particles. Okay, so that's our expression. So basically, it depends very strongly on the density of conduction electrons in a material, how many conduction electrons there are per unit volume. Now that makes it a material property, okay? So, for example, the Fermi energy for silver is 5.48 electron volts, and we derived that in a previous lecture. Now this is true, this Fermi energy is the same whether you've got a nanoparticle or a bulk solid of silver, okay? And since the Fermi energy is proportional to the number of particles per unit volume, n over v or n over l cubed, this means that as you shrink the volume of material down, as you go towards the nano scale, in other words, you're also going to have to have fewer electrons to keep that same value of the Fermi energy, right? Because it goes as the ratio of those two things. That ratio must be constant in order to maintain the same Fermi energy. So if you shrink your volume, you're also, of course, shrinking the number of electrons. It also makes sense that if you have fewer particles, right, which you have to do to have a smaller volume, you're going to have fewer conduction electrons because each atom contributes a certain amount of conduction electrons to the free electron C. That amount stays constant, right? So there you go. Now, what happens is the Fermi energy stays the same, right? The energy stays the same, but the number of electrons shrinks. That means that the number of states, energy states, also shrinks. Because if you've got fewer electrons, you've got fewer states. So what it would do in sort of a picture representation, we talked about band theory in a previous lecture. The energy bands come about because you have a lot of electrons, right? You have a lot of them in a bulk solid. And so the spacing in between states gets really small, right? Um, and that makes it look like a band. But if you go the other way and you start to shrink it down, it's going to look less like a continuous band of energies and more like discrete states. So it would do this, moving from left to right as you shrink it down. Okay, so it looks more discretized as you shrink your particle down. So this is what happens when we move from a bulk solid, pictured here at the top, down to a particle with just a few atoms, down to a particle with, say, only one atom. Okay, so we're shrinking it down. So a band is a lot of splits, right? Very dense packing of states. If you have just a particle with just a few atoms, you're going to see fewer states. All right? So that's what happens as we start to confine things. As we approach quantum confinement, the states look more and more like an atom, right? They look more and more discretized and less continuous. So we can estimate the spacing between energy states, right, using these ideas. The change or the, the spacing in between the states delta E would just be equal to the Fermi energy and then divide that by the number of conduction electrons you have. Now, this is just an estimate, okay? It's not going to be exact, but uh, it is going to be proportional to that, okay? So, this lecture is about quantum confinement. What do we mean by that, okay? What we're doing is we're going from the bulk and approaching what a quantum uh, system might look like, what a single atom might look like, as we confine in more and more dimensions. So we go from a bulk, for example, to say a quantum well, where you just have confinement in one direction, like teeny in one direction. So you could think of a big film, right? But maybe it's thin. Or a wire, 
right, where you're confining in two directions. Now I've confined to the, um, say, the width and the thickness, but the length is still long. That's a quantum wire. And then a quantum dot, you're confined in all three directions, right? So that's more like the particle in an infinite square well here, okay, 3D infinite square well. And so what happens is that your electron density changes, as that happens, the number of particles per unit volume, right, that's going to, to change as you start confining. And the function, what that looks like as a function is going to change, as you can see here, going across the top looking at the electron density. And as you confine in more dimensions, this uh, electron density looks more and more like a step function. Okay. Now, the density of states, that will also change it. Remember that we started off with the last lecture showing that for a bulk cell, the density of states is uh, proportional to the square root of the energy, right? And so that uh, is pictured here in this leftmost uh, graph here. And then as you confine, it's going to look more and more strange, more and more quantum, okay, as you move from left to right. So we've got going from a smooth function to kind of a series of step functions to these jagged peaks to just dots. So those represent the quantum structures and their electronic properties. And as you reduce it in more and more dimensions, eventually you wind up at the quantum dot. And the quantum dot mimics what's going on in a single atom. This is what we know as with what we call quantum confinement. Now, how small is small enough for quantum confinement? Okay. Well, that's a little hand wavy, depending upon what you're talking about. But basically, in a previous lecture, we talked about the de Broglie wavelength of a particle. Remember that the de Broglie wavelength is lambda, right? Which is equal to Planck's constant h divided by the momentum of the particle, okay? Now remember that within, a, within confinement, if a particle is a wave and a wave is a particle, what happens? Waves form standing waves when they're confined. And when they form standing waves, all other wavelengths cancel out. So basically what you have to have for quantum confinement is you have to have these standing waves form. Now, if your well is too wide, it's not going to work out. So you need your, your well or your confinement dimension to be on the order of one half. As you can see here, the lowermost, uh, the bottommost energy level is one half of a wavelength up to a few de Broglie wavelengths. Okay, so that's what you, that's the sizes that you have to have for quantum confinement. All right, you need these standing waves to form. Okay, what would that be for conduction electrons? Okay, well, our equation for the de Broglie wavelength, lambda is equal to h over p. We're going to assume non-relativistic, so that's h over mv. How fast were they going? Remember, we talked in a previous lecture on the Fermi energy about the Fermi speed. And we said we set our Fermi energy equal to the kinetic energy of the particle, one-half mv Fermi squared, and that gives us an estimate of how fast these particles might go in, and you can solve. So, for example, for sodium, the Fermi energy is 3.15 electron volts, which is 5.04 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Solving for the Fermi energy, um, solving for the Fermi speed, the Fermi speed is the square root of 2 times the Fermi energy divided by the mass of the particle, so that's 2 times 5.04 times 10 to the minus 19 joules divided by the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Plugging that into your calculator and solving, you can see that the Fermi speed for sodium is about 1.06 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. As a reminder, right, lots of times people think cold means slow, but remember that this is a, a different model. Okay, this is a different type of statistic, quantum statistics, and so that's not the case, right? So even at absolute zero, these electrons would be booking. Okay, so that gives us a, uh, an estimate for what our wavelength would be. Lambda would then be Planck's constant divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 uh, times that Fermi speed, about 1 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Now that gives us something on the order of nanometers, all right? Metal nanoparticles have to be about 1 to 10 nanometers to behave as quantum dots. But Fermi energies for semiconductors are smaller. And so that means that the volume of the quantum dot itself can be larger. So to achieve quantum confinement for semiconducting particles, 
you can have a larger particle for a semiconductor than you can for a metal and still exhibit quantum effects. So that means that when they're doing quantum dots, most, most folks will actually shoot for quantum dots made out of semiconductor materials because it's easier to make slightly larger particles than it is to make slightly smaller ones. Okay, so that's quantum confinement. Uh, that's where the ideas come from, right? And uh, I hope you understood that, and I'll see you around.